the ado, let's give a warm black from the master from Okay. Glad to be back in New York City, as usual, second home. Um, most conscious place on the planet. Uh, good thing about the consciousness, good thing about the consciousness, this, this is one thing that the, uh, that the Jews know. And that is, <laughs> that is, that, <laughs> that is that, uh, um, uh, that is that, they knew that there was supposed to be an ancient people that would be ancient enough to rise out of the ancient world into the modern world. They know that they're not the ones because they wasn't around long enough. So when they look at this thing and they say, well, who are these ancient people? Where were they come about? They monitor that, not by a lot of advanced metaphysical things that they notice about the people. Although they do based on the medical things, there's certain things, they re certain research things um, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't be in mind now, we're making a tape, I have to say this, and I don't want to be rude and all, because I know we're a fan, but we're making a tape when it goes around the country, and these people raise hell when the babies start acting up, because it's going in that camera, and we, we teaching the people, so, you know what that means, do I have to take them out, no, no disrespect, but, that's the way it is. We're in warfare now, you know, so when the babies, you know, do that, you know, because, uh, and it's for your protection, too, because you don't know the junk they talk about y'all children in TV land, out in California, South Carolina, or whatever, raise hell. So, you know, that's just the way it is. But um, when they look at this thing, they know that the consciousness that they're talking about, um, they know that, that when they're looking at these, pinpointing these people, that the, that the hermetic material talks about it will be a rise of a people in a faraway land. They knew, uh, it's also is prophesied in 1985 version of the first Highlander. They said there will be a great gathering in a faraway land in the movie, and that gathering um, will, will become the... Uh, the Highlander will rise, which would be the one, there could only be one. They're talking about one consciousness, uh, one world, uh, uh, separation from um, the, 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 the magnitude of different uh, species and all to one Godhead that they're talking about. They all, this is in all the texts talk about a great gathering. That's what uh, 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 when uh, Reverend Phil Valentine used to put together his gathering of the masters. That, that concept came from a future time when there would be a people in the future that will gather together. The Europeans know it, the Jews know it, that's trying to steal our legacy. They know it. You see what I'm saying? And as a result, um, they were looking for, well, we said, well, what is this great gathering? This great gathering is none other than all forms of conscious black people who basically rose up in mass, and, we, and, and in mass, when we're talking about the conscious mass, which is old point something, we're not talking about the masses of the people, but who rose up around the late 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Now, we've always had conscious uh, 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 settlements, you know, from, from Marcus Garvey. We didn't go back to the 1800s that had these particular aspects, but when We've always had those, but whenever we reach back into classical antiquity, we're talking about bringing ancient Kemet, bringing other sciences, ancient Samaria, different things that we didn't talk about in the 60s and the 70s, they knew then that that intelligence, they knew that that conscious community was those particular people. So you're asking, when is this great day or when are these things? They know that it is these particular conscious people that we are, and so... It doesn't matter about how many people they kill, how many black people out here that's going through the trouble. There is a conscious group. Now, we got our problems. We got grave problems as conscious people, but then again, that's prophesized. Then again, that, it, 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 that would be that. It stands the reason that we have problems. We are people that's coming out of um, a, 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 a massacre of the mind, the body and the soul. So naturally, we would have these problems, but nevertheless, we are still conscious despite of that. So what, whether we like it or not, this thing is going on. You just have to look and see what it is. We think 
We take it for granted. Some guys say, well, how do you know I'm elevating? I say, well, look at all those people out there that's walking past by the thousands that don't know nothing. I'm talking about black people. For the mere fact you one person that knows something means that you are an advanced being. So, you, you, so a lot of times we have been trained to look in, as, science, as science fiction to look for something miraculous, and it's all based on the consciousness and what level of consciousness there is. And they know even, even I got to come to Dr. York's defense on this because it was the ADL who tipped the government off or tipped the police off. When they, they gave some police the arresting officers, who, the ones who went down to Eatonton and arrested him. And, arrested him. and they gave them uh, whatever plaque, or they gave them a, 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 a they, 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 they rewarded the policemen, or these arresting officers. They had this big ceremony for them for going down to Eatonton and arresting Dr. York. So despite whatever theological differences we might have as black people or, or philosophical differences, when you have that kind of, kind of people making some type of painstaking um, effort to go down and arrest a black person, you know it's something. And the arresting officers, when they were, when they, when they were getting whatever they get they, their awards, they said, listen, we want to thank the ADL because we could not do it if it wasn't for the ADL the, with the Anti-Defamation League and the Jews who gave us the information to go down and arrest Dr. York. You see, they said we couldn't have done it without them. So we're talking about the, this particular concept of, of people stealing our legacy as the ones, we're the ones. Why? Because those, because we don't know no poor Jews. These people are rich. You see what I'm saying? And we are still struggling. So that, this thing, you know, there's some things that just go without saying. You know, we're the original people. So, you know, we know we're the ones. That's, the, you know, as conscious people. But still yet, we got people stealing the legacy. You see? And, and, and it's still ongoing. So this is, so don't be discouraged or disenfranchised. We're going to go into some things. We got, um, I'm still doing the research, but the, 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 info, but it's, the information I'm doing now is going so far into the spirit and took, it's going down to the, the, just the, the subtle things. It's not the major things that the ego likes to hear, all the major scientific things. What we're dealing with now is the realm of the great mother who took over completely. This thing is now run by the feminine principle completely. You see what I'm saying? And as a result, it's like a mother. The things they talk about is innate things. It's no different than an innate thing between a mother and a child. And this is the way we, uh, to, to get what you want. So we're going to go into a lot of things now. Principles to enrich your life for the time we have left. There's things you can do to enrich your life every day or what you want. Uh, things to, for health, things for remedy, but, it, but these particular things are not coming in major things that you have to buy. It's dealing with things on the, on the great mother, it's just like your mother is dealing with things on the great mother level, whereas your connection with her is stuff that is very simple, and, but it's real sublime. And it's going to be the hardest thing to do because, you, because at this particular time, you can't front and say, I'm the great master. And you can convince everybody out here how astute you are and how much uh, spiritual you are, you are. You can't front that way because it's dealing with the inner self. And you only know whether you fucked up or not. <laughs> you and that particular great mother. We're going to go into this thing. This thing is going down now to the point where, as I'm telling you, things are working, that it's real subtle. It's, 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 it's real subtle. Um, one of the entities uh, is Sri Lakshmi, or Lakshmi, or Sri Lakshmi. She's a, a, a deity over wealth and prosperity. And when she comes into the kingdom, like she, she, she came into the kingdom of uh, a Vishnu, which is one of her counterparts. This is East India. Cause, and she's also from a head hair rule, Venus, Aphrodite, Anana, Astarte, Urzuli. But in this particular case, the counterpart of this wealth you need to you see these things are almost like um, formulas. And although she is the other goddesses that I talked about, and like a lot of you all like to go 
and deal with your tradition that you into? Because we don't like change. So you will take the equivalent of head hair root, because some people are in uh, into the Kemet, some people are into the voodoo, and you will take Urzuli, some, uh, uh, you will take Yemen Yah, and she's all of that. But when you call on them in those other traditions, there might be other attributes that she does in those traditions. But in this particular case, when we talk about wealth and prosperity, you need to call on Lakshmi or Sri Lakshmi. As a matter of fact, they call currency in some of the um, parts of India Lakshmi. How much Lakshmi do you have? So Vishnu is a, is, is a, is a Heru type of goddess that she comes in contact with. But when she's with that Vishnu, um, his kingdom is prosperous. Whenever she leaves, the kingdom starts to fall. Now, we talk about this because you, there's some stuff you need to get. She has an incense called Lakshmi Drops. It's a little box. I don't know. You go to East Indian places, I don't know. But you can find this stuff in New York. And it's called Lakshmi Drops. And you burn those incense, and the money starts to come. I bought some Lakshmi Drops. And lit the incense and people start calling on the phone, hey, I'm going to send you some money Friday. <laughs> you know. I should have asked. I don't know why I didn't bring nothing to put on this damn table because I got, my, <laughs> I, I got my, my love fund bucket. But I'm seeing her name and I, y'all, okay, lax me now. Now let these motherfuckers walk out here and don't get up off some stuff now. I got my love fund bucket now. But anyway, you call on lax me or Sri lax me. So these are components of the great mother, uh, the, 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 great, the, the great mother and different things. So we're going to go into this whole Venus thing because this is very important. It's going to be, and we're going to break this thing down so you can see that this, what we're talking about is the same Mayatian principle. We're going to break down this whole Venus transient thing. And it's very important. So we're talking about a phase or a realm of the great mother that is taking over. You see what I'm saying at this particular time. Fortunately. Fortunately for the black male, and I'll explain this, that why, the reason why you are locked down and you are on lockdown simultaneously with all the hells that your woman catch, and you catch hell in a grave manner, in a, in a, in a, in, in a massive manner, is because you're the only human on the planet that is equally woman. Now, I'm not talking about homosexuality, but I'm talking about equally feminine. Equally feminine. You're the only one. So in so many words, um, uh, and we will go into this particular aspect in a few minutes, but so not only is it this realm, this, this feminine realm that's come in, it's the feminine realm of both the black man and the black woman because... Deeper studies have come out about Isis and Osiris or Aset and Osar. We notice have this in India, and these deeper studies like the book, The Passion of Isis and Osiris. What's the name? I got the, that woman's name. She, she used to, uh, she's dead now, but before she died, she, she, she was with Hillary Clinton in them. What's that woman's name? Jean Wolfe. She was one of Hillary Clinton's astrologers. So, you know, these people, you know, there ain't no president sitting up in there that ain't in a cup. She's the, the, uh, she's the wife of Robert Masters, and Robert Masters is the one who wrote the book, The Goddess Sekhmet. Now, The Goddess Sekhmet is, that book was out of print for years. That book just came back in in 2003 or 2002. I think it came back in in 2003. So, Robert Masters' book, The Goddess Sekhmet, is back out. This is his wife. She wrote a book called The Passion of Isis and Osiris. And the concept here is that I said and Osir, Isis and Osiris are nothing but twin halves of the same entity. They're, you, they're the same entity. And in all, from Europe or Voodoo, they, all, they always have the twins. They also have a twin called the Acolyon. So what we're talking about here is at this particular time, you're going to have to fight hard to try to understand your species have, even if you don't have a mate, you're going to have to try to fight hard to understand that you are all one. And so these gender roles are going to have to go to an androgynous level. I'm not talking about on the sexual realm. We're talking about mind here.
We're talking about advancement, esoteric, and metaphysics. This is what I teach. So we're not talking about the sexual aspect. But we are talking about a God called, here's a, the goddess Shiva. And you know, Shiva is nothing but a form of Osiris and Horus. But there's an entity called Shiva Hermaphrodite. So we're talking about, and, and they show pictures of them, both male and female, Shiva with, 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 with one breast, and on one side is a female and one side is a male. Well, that's nothing but his, his mate, Shakti or Pravati, when they make a sacred union through heterosexual sex, but they come together in unison as one entity. So you're going to have to, you go, in order for you to become whole, you're going to have to take, if you're a male, you're going to have to take your, search for your female counterpart within you. And if you are a female, you're going to have to search for your masculine counterpart, which is in you, because all of these are expressions of the goddess. You understand where I'm coming from here? We're talking about advanced occultism. We're not talking about your religiosity. You can't trace your shit back, but 2,000 years, you're out of the loop. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So this don't include no Christianity, Judaism, or Islam, although now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to tell you that you, you're like, hell yeah, you need to abandon that shit. We don't bullshit. I'm going to sit up here and tell you that lie. Come on. It, it's just like mathematics. You find out that that stuff is nothing but a derivative of something ancient, you need to get with the ancient shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we give you too much excuses and you'll go back here, you know what I'm saying? And all that stuff is male chauvinist murder cults. You see what I'm saying? And these are the worst ones, especially Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. You see what I'm saying? These things, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm just trying to tell you these are nothing but fragments of edited pieces of a greater mystery. And, and so if you, and now, now if you want to feel good about yourself and you want to just mess around and feel good about yourself and you can tell yourself all this stuff here, you know, and you go back there and pray or you don't eat no pork or whatever type thing you don't do to get your whatever, then you can, you can play around that way. But if you're serious about getting to the other side, then you need to say, be honest with yourself and say, well, hey, have this stuff really helped me? Or did it help me feel superior over others, over my woman, over other black people that don't, you see, agree with what I'm dealing with? So we, 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 we'll be on that. We, this is in 2004. You should have been jacked off on the other stuff enough and bust enough nuts on all that old crazy shit to get to the true stuff. So we're talking about the primal aspect of where those things came from. You see what I'm saying? So in that particular case, what we're talking about here is... Um, going back, we're talking about this particular union, and, I, and I'm going ahead of myself because we've got a lot to cover, but uh, just to, to, to encapsulate what I'm going to be talking about today, um, some of this stuff is real simple. So you're going to have to reach into you and find out the aspects of the actual, of what the soul is actually dealing with, and it's not dealing with so much the physical gender roles. It's more dealing with androgyny. You understand what I'm saying? It's more dealing with androgyny. And, I, and, so, so, and so the problem here is, is you only register what I'm talking about, feminine and masculine, on a physical level based on either sex or based on your, your, your gender roles, and that's based on culture. What we're talking about is the primal essence of the soul, which is beyond the physical body, but certain expressions of the soul is manifested in the physical, but you're going to have to find out what is that particular half that I need to put together. So we have gone beyond all of the stuff. Like I said, I've come before you the last 13 years, and I've given cabinets full of esoteric information from the cosmos on in. But, and what happened was is once you become so uh, elevated in this, then it becomes real simple. If you notice... Most of the masters, it's the real simple stuff because that's the stuff that you miss. It's simple, but it's sublime. You see what I'm saying? Simple, but quite clever. You see, you heard that before. Simple, ain't it? But quite clever. So we're talking about this type of things in that realm um, of the goddess and stuff. And this is the stuff that I deal with every day. 
that I have to deal with every day with living with the living manifestation of the gods and the goddesses and stuff. And as a result, like the last three, four, five months, I have um um uh this this uh, I I got this new mate that is the encapsulation of uh, of of all components of women that I have encountered over the past 20 years, all in one sister. So when we come together, even on the sexual aspect, every time we screw, it rains. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, we had to just quit for a minute because the fucking house was getting all mildew because it was a monsoon. People was like, and the weather people were like, we don't know what's going on. And I'm like, wait a minute, this because we have tapped into some stuff, you know, because we're dealing with the elements. So when she got wet, it got wet. But we ended that particular point where we, and, and you get to the point you don't argue and you're thinking the same things. You're thinking the same thing at the same time. Now, a lot of that is going on now, period. Mm -hmm. People that you, you that should, your friends that you have common in common with, you will say something and your friend will say it. You'll be like, damn. Because that means that these realms are marveling together. You see, so we are in that particular aspect, but I'm giving you the type of stuff. And so if you're fighting it in yourself, to say, this nigga's crazy, it's about being a man, it's about being all this old bullshit here, and you want to jack off stuff, then, you know, you're not interested in being educated in the real aspect, then you might as well just leave and go on and, and deal with what you're going to deal with. But I'm talking about if you're serious about wanting to know something, then you're going to have to shed some shit that you've been taught innately. Because what's going to happen here is, when you're dealing with the goddess, it's not dealing with, you know, oh, the, you got some men might say, oh, the great mother, or uh, 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 some women might, you might talk the lingo, it's talking about your heart, and your heart chakra, is where I'm getting to. And so we're going to deal with that particular aspect in a few minutes, um, uh, in a few minutes. But right now, let's, let's get the ball on the road, and we want to... Um, Pull, pull, the, pull the libations and all. I'll put up some other deities. But this particular one, this, uh, this is another real powerful one. And although she, she, she comes through the sister that I'm with, Linda, it's called uh, uh, Linda. I'll, I'll put it up in a minute. And although she comes uh, uh, through the sister, um, it's, it's a, uh, there's a, a, a group of sisters, a mother and daughter team in, uh, in, uh, in uh, a mother and daughter team in um, Los Angeles, and although she comes through the sister and she's a part of the sister essence, this is a form of Kali. This is a form of Kali. Very powerful entity. Very, very powerful entity and stuff. I know for a fact because um, she happens to appear doing sex and all, and she's real violent and stuff like that, you know. You know, you know, you know when a motherfucker slap you in, uh, <laughs> in, the, in the middle of some stuff, you know you're dealing with some serious power. But, <laughs> and all, uh, you know, and stuff like that now. So, <laughs> she, and you know, it's the goddess, you know, you know, you know, come through and all, uh, you know, but it's some powerful stuff you see dealing with now. But real powerful and all, and, and, uh, um, real evil. I'm not talking about evil in the aspect of wicked in the religious sense. We're talking about Kali's power, Kali's raft. You see what I'm saying? Now, just stay close to what I'm talking about, because all this has a lot to do with Iraq, has a lot to do with Bush, has a lot to do with your homeland security, has a lot to do with all of that. We gotta tie all this in. Everything is everything. What's behind this type of stuff? But this is a particular goddess that Kali has been talking about since 19, 1919. And it goes by the name of Babylon. You can uh, read her story in Pyramids of Montauk by Preston Nichols and Peter Moon, or the new book called Syn Synchronicity and the Seven Seal by Peter Moon. This is by Preston Nichols and Peter Moon. There's a whole chapter on Babylon. So she's known in the Crawley's system as Babylon. She's Babylonia because each god has to come with a new name in the 2000s. So she came back. When we first invoked her that first day, she was... Babylon, the next day, she came back as Babylonia. So this is the new name of an entity, which is a form of Kali, the destructive force, or, or Pravati 
and also Sri Lakshmi. All this stuff ties in because you can't separate the goddesses. I'm going to explain all of this. But here's the book, uh, uh, A Pyramids of Montauk, which is, is for the last nine years has been an excellent book. It's, it's a must-have. This one, The Black Sun, and the new one, The Black Sun. But these are, this is a must-read, The Pyramids of Montauk. And they talk about that particular Babylon or Babylonia. Now, I, got, uh, I talked about this the last time that when they went into Kemet or went into Egypt, oh, this thing works like this? Okay, good. Does this work? Is that on? Well, I don't really need it, but you know. When they went into Kemet, I don't necessarily need it. Huh? Okay, then. When they went into Kemet in 1945 and they dug up these Nag Hammadi texts, the Nag Hammadi texts, Um, yeah. Hold on. Let me check it out, see how you Testing, 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 are you? A little more, right? Yeah, 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 testing, 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 testing. Testing, testing, okay. There you go. Good. That's good. And they dug up these Nag Hammadi texts in Kemet. All through these texts, they kept seeing the word Babylon, Babylon, Babylon. And so the Egyptologists, as well as the papyrologists, which are people who study papyrus, had concluded that uh, a part of dynastic Egypt was named Babylon. But I did research and what I found out was your pre-dynastic Egyptians, uh, pre-dynastic Egyptians, when a lot of that particular information, you know, Dr. Ben said they covered over 200 temples to Aswan Dam. And in there you have most of your Typhonian stuff. And so therefore, you know, they showed a quick, this, 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 did they put this air on for, for the white folks in the next room? Obviously, you know, there's black folks air and there's white folks air. You know what I'm saying? And in the white folks air, it could be November and they be sitting up in corporate offices with this shit. Anybody ever work with work with them in these corporate buildings? And they, and they, they run this shit like this all year round. You know, cave people on that particular level. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it's... Uh, you know, <laughs> um, so, so, anyway, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, right, ooh, we'll go into that, too. But anyway, dealing with this, um, in the Typhonian aspect, one of the Typhonian deities was Babylon, which is a complex of, uh, of the baby lion, the Babylon, the baby lion, that's all in there, or the gate of God, um, or the gate of God. And the, the Typhonians and the Babylonians, when they left Kemet, they traveled up into the Mesopotamia area and they set up a central state of Babylon named after the great uh, Typhonian goddess, Babylon. You see what I'm saying? So in 1919, when this entity came, when, when Crowley traveled to the, the, south, the, the, the uh, North African desert, and invoke these entities, one of the entities came back as Babylon, but it's also Babylonia, which is the new name, but this is a Typhonian entity. And we have text of this, uh, of, of this in the Nag Hammadi library, where they, where they actually named it, um, these texts had Babylon all through it. And, all, and, it's talk, and, and you know, just like you have the um, Babylon, which is the Babylonian, press, uh, 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 the Babylonian pra plateau, which is your Giza Plateau. And it was the Babylonian Plateau, which is the baby lion. Then it became the Restyle Plateau that you know the Rastafarians have Rasta. You get Rasta, you get Resta. Resta or Rasta Plateau is the Giza Plateau. But one of the names was the Babylonian or the Babylon, the, the Babylonian Plateau, which is named after the goddess Babylon, which is a form of the Sphinx, which is a form of Sekhmet. You see, these things are all tied in later on a form of Ishtar. All this stuff can be tied in, all this stuff can be tied in, but even on another aspect of, when we talk about any of this, uh, any of that land they call Mesopotamia, Babylonia, Samaria, it's still all black people. You understand what I'm saying? It's still all black people. You know, you go to Greece, it's the Etruscans, the Minoans, Rome, it's the Etruscans. Um, the Phoenicians, the Babylonians, whatever the, the, these people are now trying to 
just not put it on the African continent. They don't have to put it on the African continent because whatever they come up with is all black. You got to understand that. You see, we didn't have one central continental origin for the simple fact even the Africans or the indigenous black people never thought of themselves as a continental people. These are later contexts, or later uh, synopsis, or later uh, 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 concepts of, of, of this, this continental people where we have to firmly put things in the con they, they, they didn't think on that level. They thought they were the people of whatever uh, 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 central spiritual system that they were dealing with. You see? So part of that Typhonian area that, that, that traveled on up into later on established the state of Babylon was a pre-dynastic Egyptian sect. You see? Just like they, they're coming out now that they got this, uh, the Scorpion King. You saw this? That the uh, Scorpion King was a pre-dynastic e Egyptian. Your boy, the rock, played the Scorpion King in the movie. And it was actually a, literally a pre-dynastic Egyptian ruler before normal. And they and that had writing that they said that they have now found out that predated this cuneiform tablets that they were saying and it was in, in Samaria. They had this, they said well, it was once thought that the writing came from Samaria and went down into Egypt. No, they said, no, these these things predate the cuneiform. They predate the cuneiform. You see what I'm saying? So uh, they got this scorpion king down there in pre-dynastic Egypt. And so all of this stuff still ties in, but we got to get out of this sectarian way of thinking, oh, I'm only Kemet, oh, I'm only Yoruba, oh, I'm only, and you're only dealing with fragments. We are thousands of years separated from the original element. I talk about this all the time. So for you to just choose one section is like choosing one frame in a film with thousands of frames. So we have to go into what is the European calls chaos magic, which means European says, well, first of all, they say that none of this stuff belongs to us. So we have an opportunity to go further than the people in the traditions because they're sticking to their family traditions or the traditions. What ones did survive and the ones that we're trying to pick back up? So you're going to go to whatever tradition. They say, no, we study it all. Because we know that the traditions are nothing but fragments now, but if we study it all, we can get the greater synopsis of what's going on. That's why I gave you three uh, uh, pre-dynastic deity, East Indian deity, and these particular entities, uh, this particular stuff is the, the boats or the ships. This is coming from Budges Osiris, which uh, Budges, Budges Osiris, which now is, a lot of people talk junk about Budges, but which now is the book is so good until now that particular Budges Osiris Egyptian resurrection, a lot of times it's one of the few books of Budges they still use because it's an excellent book. And in this Boys Osiris book, you get these rows of boat we'll talk about in a few minutes. I talked about that the last time. You could call on these ships or these entities. These boats are also nothing but alchemical components inside of your body. You see what I'm saying? They said it's how many chakras? How many chakras is it? I think it's 190. So we're talking about a whole civilization within the human body. You see what I'm saying? within the human body, that if you, it, if you went to the ancient time, it would be equivalent to any scientific aspect of what they call different things in the human body now. You see, so these boats are registering inside of your body. You see what I'm saying? The only thing you got to do is find out what entity lines up with what organ in your body. If you do the research, that's, what you, that's where you come in. And you find out, you know, that's Heru, Seker is a form of Osiris. Sektek, that's a form of Sekhmet. Mayat, my, my that's a form of Mayat. Hinu, that's maybe another form of Osiris. Horus. You see, uh, Turti, you got to look in there and find out what these particular ones, because you could also put um, um, Hathor. I'm going to give the, the, the Greek part because that's also, you know, a, um, that's also black language. So we don't have to front with that no more. That can go, and especially this one. This is very key because you omit this. And when you omit this, you omit the most primal, primordial deity of all times. It's set. You don't know that Osiris is nothing but a later composite of set. Although set was turned as the foe of the enemy in the later day Amun realm, 
Typhon is the primordial god of all time, and all of the attributes that used to be attributed to the pre-dynastic set went into Tahuti, Anubis, Osiris, or Har-Ur, Horus the Elder. They just took the attributes of Set and broke them up into newer deities. So you got to put Set, and these are the boats. I just, so all of these are the, the particular boats, um, the, the, the boats. Um, you could also put uh, Neptune's boat. Um, but all of these are the boats, and these are also components in your body. So we got to do the scientific aspect of registering these with, comp with, with, with different parts of the body, and this puts back the God-man of the unbreakable immortal beings, this, and, and it has to deal with the alchemical and melanin process that we're dealing with here. But this is in Borges Osiris, the Egyptian resurrection. And all. So you can also call on these with libations, which we'll start doing right now, and we can get into the lecture. But it's all good and stuff. So what we're dealing with now, we're dealing with not king years of trying to unravel tons and tons of esoteric information, retying it back and re-blackening it, taking it back and trying to put it back into an Afrocentric thought. Now we're dealing with the actual spiritual ecology of this stuff that is a way of life every day. You know what I'm saying? So they told me, we want some coconut cream pie. We want some, uh, you know, some coconut cream pie. They want some banana cream pie. So you might not think of some kind of stuff because you become so technical until you don't understand. They say they want some coconut cream pie. God damn it, I give them some coconut cream pie. They like sweets. But what we're talking about here, we're talking about a whole ecological system of spirits, some that used to be your ancestors, some that used to be in the physical. That's a part of this whole concept, and you're going to have to rely on that more and more. But the more you rely on it and be truthful in sincerity, the more and more it works for you. I'm going ahead of myself, but let's, uh, you all all right? Um, you know, there's a lot of things. Uh, this book here, Conversation with the Goddess. Um, I'll get into this. This book just came out, Conversations with the Goddess. Mark Amaru Pinkham, who wrote another book called Return of the Ancient Serpents of Wisdom, which is an excellent book, very scholarly. This book is a channel of the book. <coughs> Some channel stuff he got, but on, in the back of the book, he has notes from ancient texts that you could also get that will further you into the stuff that they're talking about in this book. Very key. I'll go back into this in all... Uh, Mark Amaru Pinkham, this is a guy that's a scholar, and all of a sudden he comes down with a book. And in so many words, he's talking about the same thing, that this, this, this goddess is saying, I'm going to return and I'm going to destroy all this patriarchal shit. As a result, even in our own black um, society, all these patriarchal figures are now either going to jail, or either, uh, are either retiring, or either dying, because it's, 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 it's not about that anymore. That is, the same, that, that is in the same system of what the European is doing, ruling through this whole patriarchal aspect. So in so many words, that's what the concept of what this book is talking about, how the great mother is going to come in and it's going to actually topple these patriarchal systems. And that's what you're seeing with the whole Iraqi thing. And even though you, it, it, they, they are scheming behind the scenes, it's still ending the patriarchal domination and even, the, and, and, and even though thousands of the Arabs are getting killed in that, in so many words, they're getting their ass whipped because they're a patriarchal system and one of the worst slave masters ever. So in so many words, we applaud them getting their heads blown off because them ain't nothing but slave masters. You see what I'm saying? So we don't have no ally with no stink Arab, but especially with some piss-poor male-dominated religion is Islam which is probably one of the worst religions ever invented. Now, take that and smoke it, Mr. Muslim man. <laughs> or get the hell on, because we ain't, you know, this is warfare. We're not dealing with no falsehood. You know, but all of them, it's no different. There ain't nothing proud about the Hebrew shit. They don't have a positive woman in the whole concept. In Christianity, you know, it's all the same thing. It's all one system, the mother, the father, the son and the grandson. And you notice I, I didn't say mother, father, daughter and stuff because it's all male. 
You see, it's just interesting because even if they would have put the added books, they had a, a special on History Channel on the banned books or the Bible. And they had some book, the Book of Jubilees. If they would have put these books together, it was all taken off of ancient motif. There was a book of Ju Jubilees, and they was asking, well, why were these books taken out at the conference of Nicaea? And they had a whole special. So they tried to go in and do a synopsis or try to find out what was it that why these people didn't add these into the canon. And there was one in the Gospel of the Jubilee that said, Jesus, at the end of the world, they got hell, the people going to hell, and then they got the people going into the hereafter, you know, in the hereafter, and Jesus is standing on this mountain. And he got this person with him, and the, guy, the, the person is like, oh, man, this is horrible. I'm seeing some of these people going to hell, and they, they didn't do nothing that bad. So come on now. They, they got a self of all damnation, and Jesus goes, shh, they're getting out of hell too. Shh, they're not going to, in so many words, Jesus said, oh, they're going to be saved too. So they said in the, in the book, they said, now, the church fathers can't add this text in this thing because they wouldn't have no Christianity. That, why the hell am I going to go and do all this stuff and, and, and be all righteous when we all go into the same place anyway? <laughs> so they, they said the church fathers couldn't add this. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't have no religion. They, they, they got a text where Jesus goes, shh, they're going to be saved too. You see? Because if they're talking about souls at this particular time, the concept of um, the, the counterfeit spirits, which is the ones who don't have souls, they already disappeared. So the only thing that you can capture down in a place of hell, it hadn't made it would be somebody with a soul, in so many words, uh, uh, some with so many words, and you're going to say they're going to suffer all damnation. And so in so many words, what they're actually doing in this particular text, they're saying if you have a soul, there's no way that you cannot make it because guess what? The soul itself is salvation. It's not like the soul going to go to some other place. The soul is salvation. The hell means it's trapped in the physical body. You see what I'm saying? So in so many words, this text is giving the people a metaphysical answer of what is really spiritual going on saying, hey, they're going to make it too. You see what I'm saying? Some people say, how you say they're going to make it? What about if you raped a child? What about if you kill somebody, grandmama? Those things that you are talking about is in the human context of the physical earth. If there's no more physical earth, a physical body, which is only the illusion, then in so many words, nobody never really did anything wrong. <laughs> but act human. You see? But act human. It's just a, it depends on how you've been taught all your life. We're going above religion. So in this text, it would be that way. He goes, shh, they're going to they be free too. You see, just so, and, and so they, and they said there's a whole, you know, your, your whole Apocrypha, Book of Enoch, and all these particular texts. They got alternative stories in there. For, so you people that's, that's really have an affinity or a like for Christianity, you need to be reading some of these texts. You see what I'm saying? But then again, it's right there in the Bible too, where they say this heaven and this hell will disappear. You see what I'm saying? So you ain't going to heaven, and you ain't going to hell. Why? Because wherever you're going to go, you've already got it. It's your soul. And now we have to declare this God, even on the health level. And I'm sitting there, man, and I, about a, a, I had it when I was a vegetarian. I had this acid reflex disease. And it, it went away after I started eating that fucking Popeyes. <laughs> Motherfucker disappeared. <laughs> that shit disappeared after I got back on the meat. <laughs> so I don't know what it was. I was eating, boy, I, I had this, I said, man, I developed this acid reflex disease again. And I'm getting all this bullshit, you know, acid and all that stuff. And, I'm, and then, you know, I'm doing stuff like this, and I'm thinking, I said, wait a minute, hold on now. Come on, man, you Bobby Hemmett. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I went in there and mixed me up some elixir and called on the three entities, the three sisters. I said, I want this shit healed. And it was healed within a couple of minutes. Never had it again. Never had it again. So this, you know, you know, so it's just a matter of you got to come out of all this stuff, of this impossibility that says that you got to go the route or the route or what everybody says is what health is. You know what I'm saying? 
So, I mean, so this is, this is what we're talking about. So um, on, on that particular level, um, we have to become more, and it's very easy, it's very simple, and I've gone so far into this stuff now until it's almost a piece of cake. So let me go, let's, let me give them their, their juice first so we can go into this thing and all, because this is going to be a good one. And all, yeah, so we got a lot of stuff that we got to cover. Y'all all right? Okay, let's deal with this here. All right, let's spit them some thing and I'm gonna pour them a pour them a little cup. It, you know, usually I, t I take the mix of uh, uh, elixir, but this Maya has always been a good one and stuff. So that's for them. I'm gonna spit this four ways and um, spit that four ways and um. Call on the entities. Y'all ready? Okay. Zabarana, Zarabana, Zarabana. I see. Madre de Agua. Mama Shola. Madre de la Luna. Francisco Siete Reyes. La Spiritus de Tranquilas. La Santissima Moete. La Santissima Pedro Eman. San Simon. El Cristo Negro. La Spiritus de Tranquilas. El Cristo Rey. Labrador. I see. Luigi. Atama. Oruwaro, Powa, Ogawadi, Leowa, Godugo, Biwasta, Amatees, Awudage. Now, if you want to have some real good fire, y'all raise the tempo of your voice and we can really bring them on in. Ma, Mama, Nomo, Ama, Bass, Hashet, New Isis, Isis, Aset, Maatit Boat, Septet Boat, Seka Boat, Hinu Boat, Horns Boat, A Turkey Boat, Hen Boat, Aft Boat, Hembu Boat. Uh, Neptune boat, Neptune's boat, Ra boat, Antu boat, Osiris boat, Aset boat, Isis boat, Heth Heru boat, Set boat, Seka boat, Satis, Anukis, Satis, Ama, Bas, Pashes, uh, Otincha, Tiacha, Sheola, Shumala, Omogumu, uh, uh, Alcala, Lokeo, Kekumbo, Lalila, Owalensu, Babylonia, Aya, Ayo, Awas, Ovas, Ivas, Melectas, Lamb, El Malek, Trakon, Notorio, Exantes, Casimbo, Nisaba, Althea Lukea, Pazuzu, Lucifer, Anubaresh, Mona, Netzu, Litu, Ilhalo, Pele, Ishtar, Monu, Noku, Mana, Inmatu, Titi, Jova. Okay, get that out of the way. Are going right along. Ranesi, Sutnesi, Newt, Apit, Tyre, Janesi, Aphidian, Patanata Unra, Kapti, Uma, Metis, Shakti, Shiva, Pravati, Sadi, uh, Krishna, Radha, Sri Lakshmi, Ma, Mama, Kali, Kalima, Ama, Bas, Paset, Hera, Sheena Master, Siva, Shakti, Phallus, Athena, Vesta, Hestia, Juna, Ceres, Astara, Papagene, Elmara, Azuli, Yamalabodo, Edoedo, Kuthumi, uh, Sanat Kumara, Babiel, Mut, Rerit, Medusa, Raha Maku, Hamati, Diana, Psyche, Malkuth, Baina, Serpronos, Thal, Melanion, Atalanta, Arescagu, Akidna, Minerva, Gargan, Melusine, Dambalabodo, Edoedo, Simbi, Bridget, Van Samadhi, Aradni, Tanit, Malita, Belit, Jalahandra, Ganesh, Sita, Siva, Shiva, Dionysus, Bacchus, Phanes, Perseus, Inanna, Akamis, Belit, Astarte, Malita, uh, Astarte, uh, Aphrodite, Ashura, Annette, Barbello, Baba Yaga, Melosine, Hecati, Demeter, Persephone, Sophia, Gaia, Kundalini, Hermanubus, Athene, Metronet, a few more, Pan, Dionysus, Tammuz, Bacchus, Adonis, Baal, El, Mim, Minaru, Ama, Neama, Ba, Na, Ka, Malektas. Um, uh, okay, hold on. We get a few more. Chrysalis, Chrysalis, Pegasus, Yama, Agos Demon, Metatron, Nagas, Nagas, Mamu, Unkulakulu, Umbaba, Uwawa, um, uh, 
uh, Umbelenga, Nakumpa, Umbelenga, Kingu, Mamu, Asta, Tayamat, Leviathan, Bacchus, Faini, Cupid, Eros, Hapakrats, Baby Krishna, Buddha, few more y'all, few more, bear with me, Lilith, Layla, Lilithu, Alat, Sat, Sutha, Sutnasi, Sut, Satesh, Apit, Tayat, Amit, Hemisphere is the reason why I'm calling on a lot of these because um, I used to call on every day in my house and they talk shit. Motherfucker, what you calling my name for? What the hell you want? So I kind of cool out on their ass. So this is the only time they get to be heard. So y'all need to give them some juice and shit. Cause, you know, I've been on the, you know, they've been on my shit list for a minute. So, <laughs> you know, talk and jump. What the fuck you want? You need some snickers, you know. I'm wasting my liquor and water on their ass and food. What the hell he want? Calling on my damn name and shit. So I got a little upset, got a little hurt. My feelings was hurt. So I put them on my shit list for the last two months. So this is the first time they're getting called out. So, you know, so y'all give them some shout out now, you know. Camelfist, Canoe, Now, <laughs> Lamayen, Lamont, Bell, Bess, Bim, Beelzebub, Kakshidi, Lilith, Allah, Sat. Sutha, Karubahutia, Inuki and Spirits, Enoch, Azazel, Samaza, Samuel, Delilah, Samson, Amanuel, Aten, Atan, Adani, Atan, Hamaku, Hamakit, Ain, Ain Sada Ura, Ain Sada, Sakina, Prometheus, Sekhmet, Mayat, uh, Karabis, Aturti, Typhon, New Isis, Mut Isis, Thunderdog, Sunbear, White Buffalo, Crazy Horse, Geronimo, Sitting Bull. Anybody, that's Sitting Bull, you want to call on that shit. That motherfucker killed Geronimo, um, killed, um, Sitting Bull killed, uh, Yellow Hair. What's his name, um? General Acosta. You need to add that to your list of people to call out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, call, the call out. Uh, yeah, okay, hold on, one minute. I'm going to get some of these Native American spirits because you're going to have to get. Go get you some books on Native American deities. You got to incorporate those particular entities as a union. That's very key. We do a lot of the African stuff. You see what I'm saying? But we want to want to want you to incorporate some of those also too. Um, also too. Uh, Santio, Ariel, Medusa. This is a Native American. Let's see. Hold on. We get a, a few of those. Okay. Yemenya, Olakun, Theobi, Coleus. That's a, that's Africa. But I want to get some. Bobby L. Santi. Okay. This this is Native America, South America. Mama Shula, Mama Pasha. Cheyashka, Mama Coco, Central America, Leoa, Talashios, Oxiel, Kosiku, Sentio, North America, Genoita, Asama, Alita, Maka, uh, Astanawati, Nergat, Ashe, Ashe. Okay, so I guess that's good enough right now. You all know who you are. We're going to give one a shout out to APEP, um, Hammett, Hammett Spirits, um, Amit, the Eater of Souls. I'm gonna give a shout out to those particular ones. Uh, we're gonna go right along. Okay, let's go into the lecture. We got a lot of stuff to cover. A lot of stuff to cover. We'll start uh, right now. I'm gonna deal with a few things right now that needs to be uncovered. Uh, um, it, just some, some historical things. We always uh, revise history as it go along when you get new and pertinent information. You know, just like uh, we used to think that uh, 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 Abraham Lincoln was a messiah. And even, the, you know, even um, Chan, um, um, your boy when he did the, uh, what's the boy that wrote the what? Who was the person who was uh, in charge of Black History Month? Um, even Carter G. Wilson, one of the reasons for February was also because of um, Abraham Lincoln. You know what I'm saying? So here it is, too, this misnomer about, uh, you know, him being the great emancipator and all this. And we know that a lot of information came out you know, that, that dealt with that, we know that that's not necessarily the case. Well, it's the same thing with this whole civil rights movement, some things that we got to understand that went down, that in actuality, this particular movement that it was, was conceived as, as early as the Niagara movement, when was that? By the knowing the historians, the Niagara movement, which was a movement that started the NAACP, which was the first meetings that W.E. B. Du Bois was about, and the Spengard brothers and all those Jews in the Niagara movement and different things, they conceived this civil rights movement, which was also a Jewish movement that were later on in the, in, from the 50s on into the late 60s or the mid 60s, which is a combination, which is what, 30 years ago, uh, 40 years ago, 1964, which was, was one of the last vestiges of putting those laws in things from, from 
1954, 1955, 1964. But behind the scenes, it was also a Jewish movement. Now, which meant the Jews or the Jewish community, basically, you got to put that in? Yeah. Okay, okay, that was yeah. two hours already? You had a few you could have just eased into it, but it's all right. Yeah, okay, go ahead and put it in. Y'all all right, how many hours is that? I hear you. How old are you now, man? How old are you now? How old are you now, Shabazz? Forty. Forty. And a grandfather. <laughs> oh, the damn. Rolling Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to have one, but it's, it's, it's the spirit say, no, man, your child will starve to death. I be in court like goddamn judge, I'm hungry my damn self. You better be glad my mama live in South Carolina, I live in Atlanta, I sure enough be up in the house, you know. But I'm the middle child, so I'm the, I'm the one that can't go home. You know, the baby can go home, and maybe the oldest son, but that middle, you on your own. I was a middle child. She dropped me off from college, and it was four years before I see, saw any money. You know what I'm saying? But going back, we going back. The civil rights movement. There's a whole Jewish structure to put together a group of laws that would benefit in civil rights laws that they had to build in this country to benefit not black people, but the Jews themselves, as well as every other ethnic group. Tip O'Neill, when he was retiring, I think in the 80s, they asked him in his whole time as Speaker of the House, what was one of the main things he saw in America that was something that was just, that, 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 that encapsulated American policy, and he said this, he said, the greatest thing I saw, which was almost metaphysical, he said, I saw the, the, the blacks do the marching for the civil rights and do all this stuff and even dying for the civil rights in the 60s and the 50s. He said, and yet, he said, I saw more people benefit from the civil rights, gay, gay women, um, all types of special interest groups. The Jews benefit from the civil rights but the black people, basically. Because they all had come up and they're on top now. You see. So in so many words, this was a clever concept to go in and use a group of people as the foot soldiers and the face of civil rights. That's somebody taking your plight and saying, hey, we can benefit from the wretchedness of these black people and establish laws that can make it easy for us. You see what I'm saying? Now, it's in, and so a lot of some of these, some of these things, there was a vested interest in, uh, 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 especially some of the Jews being behind a lot of the civil rights thing, accommodating into the I had a dream speech, have a dream speech that was written by some Jews. You see what I'm saying? But even as much as getting on the bandwagon, this thing started even in the 1940s when one of the Jewish authors wrote the, the song Strange Fruit and gave it to Billie Holiday to sing. You see what I'm saying? Gave it to Billy Holiday to sing. You see, so, th so this is another aspect of why this particular civil rights movement went down. Now, first of all, we got to understand this. They were not being persecuted. They only became, they only, the persecution of the Jews is one that is contrived by the Jews. Why? Because White people look like white people. You can't tell a Jew from nobody else. <laughs> you know, you got some of them got a bagel nose or whatever, but <laughs> you can't tell some. So, so they had to literally make it, they had to basically train people to discriminate against them. Here again, taking the legacy from you, because you were the ones that was discriminated against. You see what I'm saying? So after about, a hundred years, no less than that, after about 60 years of them 
training people to discriminate against them, then they create laws at that particular time that later on this thing got out of hand and they would be barred from certain things based on they needed certain laws, which is some things that they created themselves. But it, nevertheless, they did create this uh, awareness of these Jews being so-so, these people to, be the, uh, people to discriminate against. They did the same thing in Germany, because you know that whole thing was contrived to get to Israel. You see what I'm saying? There's a whole book called the, the Invention of Ancient Israel that talks about this. It came out in 97, how that, that whole thing is a hoax to make themselves the suffering people so that they can, main, so they can be on top. So in so many words, they built this, this uh, movement for people to discriminate against them because they needed that because they're trying to take a legacy of another people. So it's interesting that your suffering is beneficial to other people even on the divine level because they know that the greatness is coming to you because of it. And so they want people to steal, steal your divine birthright. So as a result, they create these laws to say just in case this shit get out of hand, we still don't want to be barred from this culture. So they create these laws with the black people as the, as the, 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 the prototypal image. You see, and these laws, these civil rights laws would become the basis in which all groups benefit from. So powerful until the white supremacist groups had to regroup by the 1980s and call it, 1980s and call it conservatism. That's another name for white supremacy. You don't know it. You see. It's another name. So that's why the Democrats call themselves conservative now. See what I'm saying? These are cold words for white supremacy. Now, um, we know that they weren't discriminated against because it was the Jews that created the Ku Klux Klan, the, ant the, the South Carolina Anti-Defamation League and Albert Pike. You see what I'm saying? So we're talking about this whole thing being orchestrated and we being the ones that's up under the foot of all of this. So it's the same thing that's going on now in Hollywood. Hollywood now, if they want to get a certain thing passed, let's say they say, because what they want to do now, they want to, you have nudity, which is rated R, then you have what is called soft porn. Soft porn is, you see it on Cinemax late at night, and the soft porn is, a, is, 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 is the pornography where they have the whole simulation of sex without penetration. So they're saying that maybe we can get this soft porn and move it up, or either we can move nudity, which is the rated R nudity, to primetime TV. And soft porn will be for cable. You see what I'm saying? Because they've already got the rated X stuff for pay for view. You see what I'm saying and all this kind of thing? So, in order to do this, to move the rated R movies in where you don't have to snip the part out to 